Welcome back to Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays, where we can sit back, relax, take that midweek break, Hello. and uh, maybe take a stroll down <laughs> some of the more stranger things that we find. I mean, YouTube yeah. seem, <laughs> seems to think we do stranger things. <laughs> Content ID certainly does. Yeah. By the way, by the way, Netflix pro tip, you got three days to get back at me with that, then we're just done with that mm. argument. Um, <laughs> hey everyone, I'm Vin Stone, that's Joe Bryan, and that is Pedro Mateus. We got everyone live joining us when they're supposed to be working, but you know what, that's fine. That's cool, man. What's new with everyone? I know um, we were talking earlier in the pre-show. It's definitely mm -hmm. summer now, isn't it? <laughs> Just a bit. Yeah, <laughs> it definitely is, yes. <laughs> It's been high humidity here, even here in LA. <laughs> I'm sitting here, it's like 34 degrees outside, and here it gets astronomically bad, and like, with a quickness, it just does, but that's because everything's insulated, and it's mm. pretty rough. But I bought a new fan to help, like, spread some of the love in our streaming box, our Threadripper box, and I thought it was kind of neat, man. Uh, I'll give it a little plug. That's what I picked Neat. up that thing over there to the right. It's like a dual 92 millimeter. I'm like, all right, we'll hang with that. I'll pop that in there. And it does the job of trying to keep the quad HDMI Blackmagic capture card. It still doesn't work right. Cool, because that thing, <laughs> that thing puts up so much heat that putting those fans in there to circulate the heat away from the card has brought my CPU temp. Idle temp up four degrees. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> uh, Transferring the heat from one, uh, one process to another. Getting the heat <laughs> off of it and hopefully taking yeah. less heat through the HDMI cables because I firmly believe that was part of their design. And I was like, yes, yeah, so we'll dissipate heat by things plugged into it. So, mm. um, yeah, <laughs> that's what I've been up to. Also thinking about moving, not thinking about it, I'm going to do it, um, move all the network stuff on the rack up top because I'm terrified of backing into the fiber cables. I'm mm. <laughs> um, not looking forward to doing that, but anything new with you, Jill? Happiness, fun, fun <laughs> happy things. Oh, well, fun, happy things is um, I've been watching lots of Linux podcasts and game streams, but I usually do that every week anyways. Uh, but the sad thing is, is, is I've, uh, you know, I watch a lot of the Disney vloggers and I'm looking forward to the day, day when I can go back to Disneyland here in SoCal, but it doesn't look like that's going to be happening anytime soon. <laughs> and I'm just sad about it because it's one of my favorite places in the world to go. And I need to take my nephew there for his birthday, which was, which was uh, last month. <laughs> so, <laughs> Anything new on the island? Not really, although I can say that the weather here is uh, appropriately British. It's mm. overcast and cold. Well, it's not cold, but it's like 20-something Celsius. Still stupidly um, damp, as is tradition. But uh, <laughs> yeah, no, over here, I've actually been taking the uh, Pinebook Pro through its paces to uh, do a little bit of a uh, an article on it and... Uh, it's mostly just me uh, trying to get Jordan to read my stuff and correct my English. Yeah. I, I take a certain glee. In that. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's great because I know I have like 45 minutes up to a day to get in there and just add some stuff. <laughs> it's awesome. Love it. One of my favorite things. <laughs> How about we get right into this because... Uh, Linus, mm -hmm. Linus gonna Linus, man. That, that's it's uh, when he's not busy giving out wacky tech tips. Uh, sometimes he just breaks one off. <laughs> Tom's hardware. They picked this Linus. up. Um, Linus Torvalds <laughs> wishes Intel's AVX five twelve a painful, painful death, man. This just kind of popped up on the mailing list, and you know AVX. That's that set that Intel added in. Linus was like, you know what? I wish they just quit making stuff that makes the processors work better in their own benchmarks. But, you know, 512, that refers to the width, you know, in bits of the register file, that's perimeter. It, it's like a little boost that you could take advantage of. It's not even going to be in the new chips, man. Uh, so I just thought that was, it was just funny. I'm trying to find, uh, what, what do you think about this, Pedro? I'm trying to find exactly what he said. 
Pedro. The, the bit, yes, yes, I'm biased. Uh, but <laughs> yeah, no, the, Intel introducing stuff to make their processors look better in benchmarks is nothing new. In fact, you may remember many years ago, um, before AMD decided to, you know, really screw up and not put out a decent processor for about 15 years, uh, the, yeah, they straight up lied in benchmarks because they were only using certain specific software that targeted certain specific inst instructions that their uh, CPUs did. Uh, but yeah, in the past, that has kind of come back to bite them especially if we look at Spectre and it's mm -hmm. 11 variants at this point. <laughs> <laughs> Jill? Yeah, you know, I completely agree with Linus as well. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I think Intel needs to focus on fixing their core CPU technology and, uh, like Pedro said, the recent exploits with uh, Meltdown and whatnot. And, you know, there's always actually been a delicate balance between workstation level processing and and consumer it's like they always want to put as much as they can into the consumer chip which that doesn't need to be there there's a there's a reason why there's a separate workstation and server client and consumer so i think keeping those separate is is better good job all around <laughs> uh okay I, I don't tinkle with intel and okay that, that's fine apparently intel didn't have a Deep, deep love affair with this instruction set because like, no, they didn't. Yeah. Because they tried it, they pushed it a lot, and uh, yeah. if you were paying attention to the tech news for a while, all you could hear is like AVX five twelve, AVX five twelve, floating point performance, floating point performance. Like, um, you know, the FX cores had better floating point performance than a great deal. <laughs> Which FX core, the real one or the like lobotomized one. <laughs> the original one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Here's something that couldn't possibly go wrong. No. Yeah, so this is this is really cool. This is WebTorrent. And yes, now you can use any web browser to BitTorrent on um, using the library torrent pro protocol and WebRTC. And it actually works really, really well. Um, I have uh, recently tested it on the Brave browser and it's included on, on Brave. And, you know, I had, I actually had tested the beta of WebTorrent back in the day, back in 2014, and was hoping that this would be the future of uh, torrenting because it's, it's really easy to do. Um, it doesn't require a native uh, torrent app and it just makes life a lot easier. So this is this is really cool tech, and I've been waiting for this to mature. This is gonna get abused. I was just kidding with everyone. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> the web point, you know, the protocol, yeah, Pierce Connect over WebRTC, that sounds brilliant. And to, you know, support your TCP, UDP, straight from your browser, I like the idea. Browser-based torrent client, uh, mm -hmm. oh. And by that, I mean electron torrent clients. I'm looking forward to those. But um, I guess like maybe for the good side, this could possibly just like streamline the adoption of torrents. Because you get to think of how big the hurdle is for um, somebody who just wants to download something. Like I go to the thing and I download the thing. Well, now you have to take your Mac in it link and mm -hmm. put it in there or download yeah. the torrent <laughs> file, then load that and find a place, you know, I realized that because mm -hmm. one time I tried to talk a person, well, instruct <laughs> a person over the phone. This has been a minute, mm -hmm. but it's like, oh, wow, no, there's no hope here. So have, being able to just like, hey, download it. But I'm all, all, I don't want it to get abused, which probably will. And how does it deal with seeding? Is this going to be a leech only? Um, if you have the thing in your down, I'm assuming. Uh, but if you have downloaded something using web torrents, uh, wherever it gets downloaded to, uh, I assume or I presume that it will it support the it. seed from yeah. there. That's yeah. where the seed will be. <laughs> yeah, and it, it's also really good uh, for security because then you don't have to have it, you know, going to, you can, 
you can actually hide the IP with it. <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah, no, kids, here's the thing. It's 2020. If you're yeah. going to do torrents, Linux ISOs, or other Linux ISOs, use a VPN. Yeah. Seriously, <laughs> just, just use a VPN. Okay? Um, okay. I've, I've used the Tor browser <laughs> with WebTorrent, and that works pretty well. <laughs> Private internet access, they're pretty um, yeah. okay when it comes to, especially like software on Linux, they've helped a couple of projects around and they work with OpenVPN. If you just use the OpenVPN protocol, that's it. That's basically all you need. Uh, so yeah, no, use a VPN, please. Moral of the story, don't download cars. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or you can, you know, develop your own um, Linux-based operating What's system. What's wrong with this the case, domain? Logo yes. page on scared. <laughs> it's Mobian oh, no. uh, for mobile Debian. Is that like Morpheus's and, uh, like cousin? Uh, yes, <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, Morpheus's redheaded cousin. Sure. <laughs> okay. But yeah, Mobian is a new mobile-focused operating system based on Debian, obviously, uh, and it comes with Fosh. That's the GNOME uh, variant of their phone-oriented shell, which I'm pretty sure that's what FOSH stands for. Don't you have to do uh, like a the... foosh row before you say that? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> but yeah, it is another um, phone uh, operating system based on Linux that currently uh, it, they say that it's only for the um, Pine phone. And the Pine Phone has kind of made a splash because it came in at a reasonable price. Purism. Um, came in at a reasonable price. It's like, oh, you can have one with UB ports and you can have one with post-market OS and so on and so forth. But I'd rather people actually take, instead of developing an entirely new operating system from the ground up mm -hmm. that's based on Debian, just because, uh, and instead go to like post market os or to the uh, kd mobile one whatever they're called or the ub ports uh you want to touch one literally any of the ones that already exist and just introduce the stuff that's missing on those that you are implementing with this particular debian variant otherwise we're going to have the same talk around linux operating systems on phones that we currently do on the desk like it or not let me tell you how hey, this conversation goes <laughs> it is hey i have a linux phone it'd be neat if you use linux phone does it have the facebook no i don't want <laughs> Facebook is not in good terms right now. <laughs> it doesn't matter, man. We're not talking about us. We'll play with it. You're like, oh, you can just use the web. No. Uh, what? Okay. Do do I have my TikTok? No. Don't want. And Sailfish. Yes. Thank you, Arthur. And I completely mm -hmm. forgot about Sailfish OS. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a good point. And you think about like trying to bring bring that into work and be like, this is my work phone. I'm like, nah, it's not. <laughs> um. <laughs> Good try. Go get an iPhone. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've actually been looking forward to, um, you know, a, a pure Debian phone OS. Um, they were one of the the first distros to have an ARM port, after all. And back in the WebOS days, I even uh, compiled a Debian on my WebOS smartphones, my Palm Pixie and, and Pre and Pre three, and. Yeah, but but Pedro brought up a good point. It would it would be nice um, to maybe not have quite so many operating systems and to kind of just work on one uh, Debian based yeah, one. Yeah, that talk again. There's already yeah. a variety that target different things. Just help those. Yeah. Fuchsia, Fuchsia will save us all, man. But out of the box, man, I saw Arthur in chat. He pointed out I tried to boot it on my Pine phone. I was like, who remembers Pine phone? Oh right, somebody does. Uh, those are hot for a minute, and everybody's like, yeah. oh. that is kind of one of the downsides with a $100 piece of kit, because that's something you can buy, play with, and put away, and you don't have the, the guilt, you know? Like, yeah. I spent $500 on that. I got to get use out of it. And you're like, yeah, it looks good over there. Uh, but out of the box, man, shortwave internet radio, wire mapper, Linux client for pocket Ethernet uh, network tester. All right, metronome, gnome desktop. I, I'm down with that. And a browser. So and mm -hmm. the call and SMS uh, app. Doesn't so, it always? Yeah, you have a working phone. 
because doesn't. it's a phone OS. You can't have to have that. Legitimately make you step back a minute when your mobile rings. You're like, what? <laughs> Huh. That's usually because the video, be it on like Netflix or YouTube, just pauses, is, and I'm like, "Oh God, what happened?" Mm. And then my phone starts ringing. It's like, "Oh, that's what happened." Okay, <laughs> it can catch me off guard, man. Uh, <laughs> this is not Voltron. This is Voltorb. Look, Vegeta, <laughs> it's a Pokemon. <laughs> oh no, it used self-destruct. Uh, no, the, the, it is very much the name of a Pokemon, Voltorb. Uh, but this oh, one really? is, yeah, <laughs> um, it's a uh, it's an underclocking utility. Uh, it is basically you can just if you have an Intel CPU, fourth generation or up. Uh, you can go in and set like temperature targets, core voltage, uh, cache voltages, uh, uncore voltages, and if it has an integrated GPU, you can set whatever voltage is going to that too. That will apply the things directly, uh, but I wholly would not recommend that you use this. It's a neat thing that's there, and if you want to play around with your processor, please do, but even Intel, you know, the Spectre people, uh, have decided to kind of stop allowing people to undervolt or even play with the voltage all that much be between, uh, Come on. unless it's between like the little factory little. <laughs> defaults because of the plunder vault attacks. Just don't, don't. <laughs> I don't know, man. I mean, you know, this does require an Intel CPU. That's fourth gen. Um, no love for the AMD. It's only going to work with System D. So keep that in mind. You do have packages for Ubuntu and Arch. It has profile support. So I, if you were mm -hmm. like, if you held a loaded potato to my head and said, use case, I'm like maybe on laptops, maybe maybe I I, I could see that even. Even for desktop uh, CPUs, there is a point to un undervolting because if you can bring down the volts and the processor stays stable, it means that the boost clock will boost higher for longer because there's less voltage, so the temperature is lower. There is a point to that. Thermals and performance, but that requires a lot. But yes, something. it requires a lot. And precision yeah. boost <laughs> and the ability to adjust voltages on the fly along with clock speed. Even with this first gen thread ripper, most of the time this thing sits at like 1.9 gigahertz, just derp, 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 until I would open six. something. <laughs> the case of most of them. <laughs> and uh, it'll jump right up to, you know, 442. So I, I let that handle, man. I don't, I don't go tinkering with that. The, the only like real, like, okay, that's worthwhile was the um, last gen AMD cards. Oh yeah. When it came to undervolting, <laughs> I'm like, undervolt. Oh no, actually, that, mm -hmm. that's definitely worth it. Yeah, it's like you undervolt. It's like, oh, all of a sudden, instead of idling at fifty, it's idling at forty, and uh, under load, it actually boosts the uh, GPU clocks higher. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> that's pretty cool. Well, you know, we've actually used undervolting a lot in the animation field. Uh, that that I I used to use it a lot, even back with my Pentium Pros and old Xeons, um, just because you know the computers would be on for a month at a time, and it would help with heat dissipation and whatnot. So we always had scripts that would do that for us. So yeah, yeah it's a thing. <laughs> it on a modern system just yeah. Don't mess New with one. it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The, you don't have that much, like, overclocking room anyway, so leave the voltages alone. Leave mm -hmm. Volte alone. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, man. Why do they always get the stories that can go horribly wrong? Uh, Google and Ubuntu team up to bring Flutter apps to Linux. Google is bringing the fruits of its cross-platform app-making framework, Flutter. That's the real name, kids. The Linux desktop with the help of Canonical, no less, man. So, what is it, man? Over 500,000 developers already use Flutter. Is it fair to call this Electron 2 electric boogaloo? Probably not. <laughs> Probably not. Because Google's like, yo, we're working to make this very, very native. Doing extensive refactoring to the engine to support power. 
and uh, provide native desktop experiences. So they want this to run right. And Canonical is working with the Googs to improve Linux support and maintain feature parity. So, okay, I think, I do think, this could be a very, very beneficial, fantastic project, especially for the Linux ecosystem, right up until Google kills it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, I don't think they're going to kill this one too quickly. <laughs> I'm still but, holding the yeah. candle out for Stadia. That's uh, a comment. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> well, the difference with this one, this is, it, you know, it, it's targeted at the developers. And um, there are a, a lot of developers and bringing them over to uh, native Linux applications is always a good thing. And it also brings uh, new users with it. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, it, it's very possible that the Flutter created apps could surpass Electron ones in the future. Um, it would be nice to have I'm a competitor sure to they Electron. Could op <laughs> they could optimize them to use a bit less RAM. 1.2 yeah. gigabytes there for Discord. Go. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> yeah, very true. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, but I know a lot of developers that use Flutter. So this is, this is actually a really big deal because a lot of them are developing on Linux but they're creating apps on Linux for other platforms. And so this allows them to create Linux native apps. I just don't like having another channel of anything. Um, oh, install as a snap, yeah, nope. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, it's Google and Canonical that, you know, looked at Electron's like, Google's going, wait a second, Ceph is our thing. The Chromium embedded framework yeah. is our thing. We could probably do a We're going job with to. That. Yeah, we're Let's going to do some something better with that. And then it's like, we need to bring this to Linux. Ooh, mm -hmm. in the Linux, uh, like, development environment, do we know has a uh, not-developed-here syndrome? Oh, that's right. Canonical. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's tell them we're reinventing Proton. And uh, I'm pretty sure that's kind of <laughs> how they got them on board. Maybe it's they're not trying to reinvent <laughs> Proton. Maybe they're trying to, like, man, you guys have created a monstrosity with this thing. It's been a monstrosity for years now. Years. What changed? <laughs> oh, that's right, Pedro. If something's terribly broke for long enough, just leave it alone. Don't try to improve it. And Pedro laughs. He's like, nope. Too much work. Not, Walk away. Why not improve Proton? And to be fair, you know, KD has been broken for years, and um, mm. they've only just now started to fix it. So, <laughs> I'll take anything because, you know, Electron is the new Flash. It's a new Adobe. Yeah. yeah, it it is the bloated. Technically, it gets the job done, but that that's really it. And it wouldn't take much to improve Electron. I would at least like to have an option. I like that it's being yeah. cross platform. <laughs> and you know what? And you say what you want about Canonical. They're stepping in, trying to do something. This is like one of the things that I praise them for because nobody else is doing it. I mean, everyone else is content. And just, just, if you're going to sit around and be like, oh, well, Electron's horrible. Are you doing anything to fix it? No, but I'm complaining about it on the internet. Ha ha. <laughs> we needed something like Electron. And for the longest time, Electron did what it said on the tin. It is a web application that runs on the desktop on a single use browser. It that, is. That's it all enables, it does. It <laughs> same issue with like when you start making game engines a little too simple to use. Um, mm -hmm. they're good at their job and that can be a baby's bad first app. Yeah. <laughs> Chromium wrap all the things. <laughs> yeah. oh, so who still downloads music? Uh, iTunes users. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> iTunes, I, iTunes streaming has been a thing for. Uh, yes. But if you're want to have your music, uh, music library, music. music <laughs> yes, <laughs> your music library on your phone and you don't have uh, or you have a very limited data plan and you don't want to be streaming all the time, you got to download it. Um, but chances mm -hmm. are you do have a 20 to 30 to 50 to one terabyte big music library mm -hmm. from those days that you use to download Linux ISOs. Not if I have yeah. iTunes Match or Google Music. <laughs> no. <laughs> But yeah, iTunes music. Uh, no, this one is, uh, well, it's XMMS to MPRIS. And 
Yeah, it basically just brings the uh, media player remote interface specification to XMMS2, which is great. It's 2020, current year argument. At this point, there should be no media players that don't have MPRIS support. <laughs> uh, yes. it, it's not just KD. They actually uh, show a screenshot of um, KD. It's like, okay, so if you go to like the uh, system tray and you see there's something playing, if you're running XMMS2, it'll show like album cover and you can... Um, go around the timeline and you can skip to the next song and you can do all the stuff that you could do with most other browsers and KDE have done a very good job including MPRIS to um, basically everything like literally everything in the desktop uh, environment as well as their phone support uh, like KDE Connect you can control your media playing um, that's playing on your desktop or your laptop from your phone that's pretty good that's pretty good. <laughs> XMMS yeah, was definitely something I downloaded. That was like probably the first <laughs> five, ten apps with any system. Yes. Same here. I actually, I still use XMMS. 20 years and, ago. <laughs> <laughs> XMMS too. Actually, I stream with it as well. And like Ven was saying, um, uh, one of the features it had back in the day is when you were, you were streaming uh, internet radio stations, you could save them as well with a plug-in. <laughs> XMMS. So. That was the thing, yeah. That, <laughs> yeah. Ice cast, all that fun stuff, internet radio. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm messing with it anymore. I'm old so. and set in my ways these days. <laughs> oh, what are you jamming out to? Uh, quantum gravity lecture. Yeah. <laughs> listen to the sick beats. Um, I went back to listening to Static X. I don't it know does. why YouTube suggested it, and I just went down that particular rabbit hole. It's like, oh, okay, yeah, that, I like this. <laughs> that, that's what you do, man. You probably bought one, like, one of those thirty dollars Matrix jackets off Amazon. You put that on, and sit down by yourself, put on some static X. In no, the yeah. but I've had like a one hundred pound one on my eBay watch list for a long time. That here's, I still haven't bought. Here's the true, true. Like some of those things, um, like the ones that we were wearing in the uh, Weeb Souls. Mm -hmm. I was like, I would. <laughs> I'd wear that public, wouldn't blink twice. The problem is yep. they don't make those in quality. They, they're all, no, they're, they're all like crap. costume jewelry type <laughs> stuff. And I'm like, no, I'd pay three, four hundred for something like that. But now, tis not to be. <laughs> Some Dragon stuff. Oh, well, man. Winamp, we, uh, with, <laughs> with, with uh, XMS, M MMS, you could get a lot of the Winamp plugins to play with your audio. And that used to be a thing, too. <laughs> <laughs> I love all this. <laughs> Check this out. We got to get into a slice of pie, but first, do we? We actually have a. <laughs> this is kind of cheating, but I'll allow it. Um, <laughs> no. <kind of. laughs> well, uh, someone bought me a thing, and uh, as I pulled the note out of the uh, the box, it's like, oh, Steve's husband bought me a gift. No, no, no. Wait a second, Pedro. The cake might be a lie, but this gift isn't. Tee -hee. Happy, happy birthday, Jill. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, Jill got me the, um, let's put that away from the light, the new ice tower cooler Yay. for the Raspberry Pi. <laughs> and um, we talked about this on the show. Uh, yeah. It's been on my wish yes. list for a while. And it effectively does cut the uh, SOC temperatures in half because it doesn't, you know, peak at like 80 C anymore. It peaks at 42 Wait a minute. after like her... 30 minutes. It you works dare good. <laughs> imply passing air over? It's yeah, it air the with, you know, like aluminum fins and what? one heat pipe. This with is violating every known law of thermodynamics. How dare. <laughs> Oh, and it even has oh. the bling bling to go with it. It does. It actually has two RGB yeah. LEDs. It has more RGB LEDs and it has heat pipes. Oh. Is that so you and can I, find I, it when you throw it out in the yard? Oh, well, that I had to no get noise. that. That's the thing. It really doesn't make any noise at all. <laughs> yeah, I had to get that for Pedro because we had been talking about it um, in the show and uh, wanting it. And I need to put it on my wish zone, too, because when I saw it on Pedro's, I'm like, oh, that's what I'm getting him for his birthday. <laughs> Thank you very much for that, Jill. Uh, that was uh, that was a, an emotional roller coaster. <laughs> Aww. Like that whole thing is like, oh, Steve husband. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's like, what did I do? Oh, God. <laughs> and right before the show, we had uh, Joel kicked in. Yes. Showed up. Yes. Just came, uh, set up, well, at least all the notifications set. New patron. Speaking of patron, that's Yay. how we finance right everything we do. We are completely community supported. All we're asking, man, if you get like four quarters laying around every week, throw them at our faces. It'd be brilliant. We put it to good use. Pays for, especially for bandwidth this month, man. That nightmare. Uh, equipment, hosting, all the fun stuff. We got a bunch of different levels, Pedro. Can you get something back? Or we're just like, no, just give us money. No, you actually do get a lot of stuff back. Um, you get Discord access, although you can still get that if you support us on Twitch. But you also get access uh, to an extra hour of uh, podcasting nonsense uh, every week. And your own RSS feed to uh, listen to that. That's our pre pre um, shows, and man, that show goes yes. places. There is no <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's for sure. It's all it over goes the all the places. That's the thing. <laughs> it's basically it, the conversation that we don't necessarily want to have live, and we're just trusting you not to narc on us. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's basically letting you into our conversation. So. Cool. <laughs> but, and, and occasionally, Michael showed me like, wait, 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 wait. What are you guys? What are you? You're not as dumb as you play, huh? Like, it's like, oh, this turn a bit of a turn. This took a bit of a turn. It's like this turn a bit of a turn. No, <laughs> this it's, no. This turn a bit of a took. Kind of brilliant. <laughs> Pop in Discord. Come say hi. You get customized RSS. We get gang and stuff. Patreons really helped us. Um, do what we're doing right now. We always are looking forward to do more and well, yay, cost money. Mm -hmm. So, thanks, yes. each and every one of you. Get your name <laughs> in the credits and all that. We'll shame you publicly if you really, really want to be shamed each and every week. Um, anything but off the studio <laughs> list, uh, we'll get you uh, on the wall for the find upstanding cannibals right next to Linus. You get to make a Linus and Nicholas sandwich. It will be too. <laughs> You'll be the meat in that particular uh, white bread sandwich. Yes. It is. And come hang out with us on Saturday nights. We do a community thing in the um, after shows. And after we get done with Link's Teamcast Weekly, we invite everybody to come hang out and play some yeah. video games. So much Last fun. week, we shot each other with tanks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, more accurately, projectiles from tanks. Shell shock. I didn't get the shoot. All that much. <laughs> I immediately got taken out. It, it was a collective, <laughs> a, a nonverbal community <laughs> decision just to crush you on the like this first and second side. <laughs> you left Scott alive. <laughs> that was Aww. an oversight. That, that was an oversight. Hey, Pedro died quicker than I did, so that's saying something. Yep. Come check out tomorrow. Uh, Pedro, not Pedro, Pedro will not be here. Jordan and I will be going through, uh, we're going through Wolfenstein on Linux using that Proton Magic in multiplayer Youngblood. We're learning. We're going to try to do it stealthy, which is going to be three seconds of snack, followed by, oops, mm -hmm. boom, then it just goes to haywire. So that'll be entertaining. Come chunk that out tomorrow. Uh, I mentioned <laughs> the base get a wish zone. And, oh, we have merch. If you want to throw that on your face, chest, or neck, get a shirt. That'd be cool. They're not crazily priced either, man, because I don't like that. We're not making much off of them. But hey, man, you can advertise for us, right? That's how that works. <laughs> yes, advertise Yay. for us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Then I will buy. Man, that's, that's like the true. I don't want to tell you how many shirts I've bought. Uh, not our stuff, but other stuff that's still in the packaging. I was like, I just bought it to give you some money, man. <laughs> yeah. Aww. Yeah, that's <laughs> what to do. I don't wear t-shirts though. So in my defense. Yeah, you do. Oh. You. Well, I have the whole LGC collection now. So Yeah, anytime <laughs> I, anytime the company ever needs a couple extra bucks, I just release a new color. And <laughs> <laughs> it's a strategy that has never ones. failed, man. Um Beautiful people, let's get back into it. We're done with the shameless self-promotion and talk about a slice uh, pie. A slice is... of cherry mm. pie. Gaming oriented. <laughs> it's moose, Jill. Uncooked moose. It could moose. be Oregon <laughs> pie, yeah. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> We're going to do some games, man, because I ran across like two little things. Oh, man, I don't like your little uh, coffee. Ah, uh, I thought he was like, blamming. Uh, check this out. What is this? This is pie prom. Does what it does in the tent. 
Just a quick mention, it allows mm-hmm. you to easily read, write, and erase your original Xbox CE prom. The Duke, the big boy, the one that you were installing Xbox media that are on way back in the day. Now, there is a note, you do have to enable your I2C interface on your Raspberry Pi to get it up and running, but this is about as dead simple as it gets. Go JTAG some stuff. Play around. Oh, yeah. Break it. <laughs> learn about electronics on your journey to correct what you've broken, like all of us. Uh, yep. I like this, man. You know? <laughs> this is just a cool project. Yeah. I just want to give it a shout yeah, out. Yeah, get I your don't have retro gaming on. <laughs> the original Xbox, nor do I ever plan on buying one, but knowing that stuff like this is out there. Because, hey, man, I, I can imagine being 12 or 13. Hey, if you're looking something for your kid to do, that's going to be cheap. I don't know. Have um, have hipsters slapped the retro thing on the original Xbox? I, I don't think so. <laughs> I think we're still in like the pre Xbox N64 era ish. <laughs> that's kind of the problem, though, because like the second that happens, they go from things that you can find at a thrift store, a consignment shop mm-hmm. for you know a pound, five pounds, and then they're on eBay selling for two hundred dollars. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. Yeah, my original <laughs> Xbox is running Linux, so. That's what I use it for. <laughs> and yeah, this uh, is knowledge that if you can get it to work correctly on the original Xbox, there are a bunch of computers out there that have EEPROM chips that you can maybe adapt the knowledge that you got from this and do it on those. It's been a minute yeah. since I've smoked an EEPROM. <laughs> Uh. <laughs> I had to I had um. to uh, short the one on the X230 that I sent Zoe uh, to get rid of the BIOS password. That's always a fun one. I, well, <laughs> it was probably one of those Atmel 2310 PCs. But I, don't put those in backwards. Uh, my... <laughs> to continue the gaming conversation, I the, again, I'm just throwing this in because this is neat. We were talking about this in our Discord earlier today arduino nintendo emulator i'm not making mm. this up i i said that correctly because <laughs> that's what it's called nestu a nintendo nestu. emulator for arduino uh, it's of course it's overclocks i'm like i didn't know i could love you boar of course it is emulation <laughs> s games uh mm. barely but it works yeah. i mean yeah, it renders Very on screen. Cool. It takes your input. You can actually play it, yeah. but you're playing at eight nice. frames a second. <laughs> I think it's more like 15. That's way too slow to be 15. <laughs> okay, hang on. You, you can be the judge at home. Let's. Uh... Yeah, I, I think the Raspberry Pi is a little better for this. <laughs> oh, this oh, yeah. has nothing to do with. Um... Yeah. <laughs> I'd say 12, 12 It does half. work, though. Yeah, it, I'd say 12 to 15. Oh, gee, anime. All right, I can see <laughs> that. Yeah. <laughs> this is... I made it work. I'm drunk with power. Deal with it. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. No, that and is that's amazing. Awesome. <laughs> that's yeah. all that is, and I I support that. There just fills me with... Because how did yeah. you get a NES emulator? Like, if you're like, maybe I could do it on tour, but emulating... That, that's, the whole mess. You're, you're effectively Arduino. taking, you know, yeah. yeah. You're, you're taking a very an low power SBC. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, oh, that's done. awesome. That, that, yeah. <laughs> so let's talk about something with just a little more horsepower. Yeah. So, oh, this is really exciting. So the uh, Ubuntu Mate. Uh, is available 2004 uh, is now available for r- the Raspberry Pi. We've got the 32 bit image Raspberry and Pi the 64. 4. Yeah, <laughs> Raspberry Pi, Pi 4, but it also works on the Pi model B, uh, 2, 3, 3 plus, and of course 4. And it, it, it includes the, the new performance optimizations that Canonical has released for Ubuntu. Mm-hmm. And, you know, Ubuntu Mate, it's one of my, my favorite distros to run on the Pi because it, it's really fast and really, really optimized. And now it runs with the uh, um, hardware accelerated driver by default, which is that that was one of the biggest uh, 
biggest cool things about this so that right there is what's going to make the difference between like ubuntu mate 4 and raspbian os because raspbian os yes it's like it's an operating system you're up and running you figure it out from here everything works you just have to figure it out for yourself ubuntu mate is very much targeting the it's like I would like to indulge the whole, I want to use you as a <laughs> desktop computer, as a desktop replacement. And um, it does. Uh, not just on the Pi, but also on the Pinebook Pro. Uh, you want to mate, he's the best. And that's one of the things that I was asking. Um, guess he didn't see the question. I asked uh, Martin on streams, like, is the Pinebook Pro going to get some official love uh, like the uh, the Raspberry Pi 4? Because that would be really nice. I am currently running Ubuntu Mate on the uh, Pinebook Pro because it's the best. But uh, there's a lot of stuff that doesn't work out of the box there. So it, it, I don't know, it'd be nice. That... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's... Well, it was really fun watching Wimpy's live stream because he, you know, he yeah. talked about how you still have to reboot to get the Wi-Fi to work and and whatnot. And uh, that was, uh, I, I just, I'm just so impressed with Mate, and I'm running yeah. it right now. <laughs> Good times for everyone. Um, I don't know, like the whole desktop thing. I like that Mate is uh, just kind of spreading out everywhere. It's completely serviceable, and I do believe it's lightweight enough to but then again the best thing in the world with a pi 4 8 gigs of ram it can technically function as a desktop just as long as you're not doing too much with it right <laughs> yeah uh use uh the new and improved booting from usb3 functionality please <laughs> Ooh, yeah, yeah he's working on that <laughs> yeah <laughs> Good times. Hey, maybe you want to tell us about your pie powered adventures. Mm -hmm. You can always do that. Um, send us some feedback. You can head over to LinuxGameCast.com. We have a contact button. But what are you talking about? This is weekly, daily, Wednesdays. We have this advanced technology. It's called a drop down menu. Where you can <laughs> select the show, put in a name, put in an email, give us a subject, give us a message, man, and we might be able to read it on the show. It'll be brilliant. Mm -hmm. You can also leave comments on YouTube. They're there. Patreon comments get priority. Yeah. <laughs> if you're our boss, yes, we're at least going to do that. <laughs> and that's going to be a brilliant thing. But we got to bounce out of here. And speaking of patrons, we get to roll the credits because that sounds Yay! like a plan. We love our patrons. <laughs> Oh, without them, this They'll show would exist. They'll be outdated now because Joel uh, was right before the show started. Wrong credits. Yeah. yeah. Uh -oh. Deal with it. This is not adorable chaos. Well, I guess it is. I guess LWW could be true to adorable chaos. Yeah, that's small enough. Ah, yeah, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> Technically, the credits go here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yay! We got Arthur and Empty, the Atomic Ass, Mike G, Barbrandt, Eldius, Mac Geek, Scott, Frostclaw, Drummer, Lutris, and Foxdog as our executive producers. Yay! We love you all. Awesome. And so many beautiful, so many awesome producers that <laughs> I can't name them all in time. Out. Yeah, <laughs> Rudy, Jordan, Bram, Rohit, Steve, Mr. Amish, Stephen O, Rene, Renault, Mr. Maker, Sir, Steve, Lee, Ryan, Ryan Zach, Kim, Craig, Vertunuda, Christian, Joel, Oxford, Kamala, the Admiral, Lisa, JT, Jellybean, Jelly Bean, Dutch, Reinecker, Ray, Chris, Craig, Stephen, Dusky, Nathan, Yay, we love you, Dusky, Ryan, Simcha. Captain Zero, <laughs> Lucid Links. <laughs> Y'all are crazy, but y'all are awesome. <laughs> bye bye. Bye, everyone. <laughs>